Welcome to the fifth section of our course. In this section, you will learn how to debug your reactive Spring application. So debugging of reactive application could be tricky, so we need to learn about techniques that allows us to capture errors in a processing that works in an asynchronous way. In this section, first you will be analyzing the stack traces in your application, then we'll be enabling the additional debugging capabilities, so we'll leverage reactive asynchronous API for capturing errors in runtime. Then we'll add logging in your streams together with a checkpoint technique. And finally, we'll recap of testing time in reactive flows with virtual scheduler. So this is the first video in which we'll be analyzing the stack traces in your application. We'll be simulating flux failure. We'll be analyzing stack trace produced by the reactive flow and we'll see problem of fast fail. So let's say that we have a simple flux that is created from iterable of foo. Foo is a specific class that has ID, formatted name, and quantity. So we are creating one item and it will be our flux. Then we have a logic that concats foo name, a substring foo name, and report result. We don't need to analyze those methods, but they are doing something. We can treat it as a black box. Let's say that we want to debug this specific logic. Maybe the error will occur. Then we create the substring foo name, divide foo quantity and subscribe to flux. So we have some operations and we want to debug it. The logic will throw expected exception, but let's remove it to see the full stack trace. So if you will run that test, you will see that it will fail with specific error. So it failed and you can see that the stack trace was printed out. So we have exception that is of the type error callback not implemented. So it means that Error handling logic is not implemented at all. So the string index out of bound exception was thrown from our foo name helper. So that specific logic throw an exception. And it breaks our reactive processing. So we can see that entire false stack trace. And what's important here is that there is a lot of internal methods that may not be important to us. We are interested in the final error that was done when we were processing the specific item. But because we are not implementing any callback strategy of the error handling, our processing finished very fast. If you will create a flow of more elements, and this is a case in normal production flows, we will not be able to capture the fact that our processing failed. We will get error and our application fail. But often when we process our data that may not be trusted, we should handle such failures and try to catch that and resume processing after that. So we would want to block that, but we would not want it to fail. We want to resume processing of different elements and continue our reactive flow. Because in this example, one on error could impact the processing of all the users. So this is not an ideal situation and we want to improve it. 